What did you want to be growing up? I don't know, I didn't want, I didn't know anything, I didn't want to be anything, I didn't know what to be. So as I mind standards business, mm -hmm. I mind my own business. Mm -hmm. Let me tell you, mm -hmm. there's no one who's gonna feed you mm -hmm. and the money you get honorably, whether it's 500 shillings, mm -hmm. is better than money you're gonna ask from mm -hmm. someone. Right? Mm -hmm. So I would rather, I did there a number of days I slept in the parking mm -hmm. because my house was closed to Musa Flats, you know, Moza. Mm -hmm. A number of days I was auctioned, I had to go buy my things here in Gara. In business, there's only one thing. Mm -hmm. When you believe in yourself, you believe in the superior being yeah. because they give you that strength to believe in yourself. Mm. But one thing that I learned in business is consistency. Mm. I have never thought of quitting what I do because it failed. Mm -hmm. It's failed. Mm. I have lost car. Mm. I've mm. lost a car. Mm -hmm. I have lost money. Mm -hmm. I have lost payments. I have been optioned. Mm. But I will not stop. I have been consistent. You know what consistency gives you? Mm. Lessons. Welcome to the Late Night Business. My name is Ian Dennis and tonight I'm quite excited because I'm going to be having a conversation with someone I can say is a jack and a master of quite many trades. You've known him because he's graced our TVs for quite a while, but there's a side of him that you quite don't know about and we'll be getting to explore that much in detail. But before we get to start off this particular show, I'd like to mention that we are at the Capital Club whereby you can actually get all particular amenities if you're a member of this particular club, not only the spa, there's the gym, there's the meeting rooms, and it's primarily the whole package for any particular entrepreneur, but I'll just like to let you know that it's only by recommendation that you can be a member of the Capital Club. And if you're traveling around the world, if you're a globe trotter, like I would want to be, <laughs> you can actually get to access it in over 200 cities across the world. The guest that I have today is a gentleman that has been a news anchor for oh, more than a decade actually, and is uh, wears so many different hats. He's not only a lawyer, a trained lawyer for that particular fact, but he's also a proprietor of ex executive cars. Hope I actually got it right. Whereby you can actually lease planes and cars. So primarily, through his company or through his business, you can actually get to Blue Trot and we're going to get to know about that. I'm speaking about none other than Mr. Ken Mijungu, who has actually been featured on a song, Calligraph song. I don't know, I, I like rapping. I have, I have three songs. You have three songs? Yes. Kunaganda Gandhi? <laughs> <laughs> I like the one for Calligraph. I remember I wanted to work for NTV, but in work NTV in Uh huh. Kelvin Jungu, so thanks so much for having come to the show. You're welcome. Yeah. Um, so let's just start off this particular conversation. Um, you're a trained lawyer. You literally went to school to literally, what's it called, study law. Um, just take me through, what's it called, your life growing up. What did you want to be growing up? I don't know. I didn't want. I didn't know anything. I didn't want to be anything. I didn't know what to be. Mm -hmm. Exactly. I was in a school where we were taught in my local dialect. Have you ever been taught in your local dialect? No. Yes. So I was in a school that. I'm we usually taught. that person. I know the team. <laughs> <laughs> so we I were, call it we were, bracket. I know we, very little. Law. We were taught in our local dialect. So uh -huh. a question that when do you wanna, what do you wanna be when you grow up? Mm -hmm. Was not a question that uh, uh, I was asked mm -hmm. then. I, I don't think I had a clear picture mm -hmm. of what I wanted to be. I remember my big bro was clear from mm -hmm. class 8. Yeah. Billy, Billy wanted to be a pilot. Mm -hmm. I remember that very well. Mm -hmm. I don't remember my other siblings, what they wanted to be. Mm -hmm. But me particularly, now I was flowing with, with life. Yeah. Where did you grow up? How was your child? Where did you spend your childhood? Um, I say I came to Nairobi in 2002 for a to look for a visa mm -hmm. to the UK. Mm -hmm. um, I was denied because already I had two siblings in the UK. Yeah. My big bro and my follower. Came. Yes and my sister was applying. Yes. So they had the advantage, I didn't have the advantage. And uh, I, I tell this story and people don't believe it, that the reason that I didn't hack it, the reason that I, I couldn't convince mm -hmm. the mm -hmm. consul at, at uh, the, the embassy, yes. UK, is because I, I, I was asked a question about uh, how much money in pounds yeah. I'll be spending mm -hmm. uh, monthly in the UK. Mm -hmm. I couldn't make that translation in my mind. Mm -hmm. So I couldn't justify. I could see shillings, not pounds. That's how, I, if you can't know how much money you're going to spend, mm. what the hell are you going to do yeah. in the UK? So if it's so proper, I came to Nairobi in 2002. Mm -hmm. uh -huh. and so I said, so I'm speaking English in 2002. I grew up in Migori County. Mm -hmm. I was born, bred, studied except for high school and university. Um, local schools behind the fence. Mm -hmm. 
anywhere. Which particular school? Uh, I, went to, so I went to so many primary schools. Yeah. I went to Kadika Primary. My mom was the principal of Kadika Girls. Mm -hmm. So Kadika Primary was at Al mm -hmm. Then I went to um, a school in Bita, mm -hmm. called Bita Point International School. Mm -hmm. It's inside Isipe, mm -hmm. an international center for uh, ecology, physiology, and mm -hmm. It was a school, an international yeah. school in there. Yeah. Then uh, the school fee was raised from 6,000 to 18,000. Mm -hmm. My parents couldn't afford it. So they sent me to a local school for one time, Bita Primary School, yeah. where my uncle used to live in Bita. Uh, so I, I, my brains, because I'd gone to an international school, couldn't match with Bita Primary. Mm -hmm. So uh, in I was almost uh, bottom 15 mm -hmm. at Isipe, mm -hmm. but in Bita Primary, first time I was number one. So that was so bottom up. I, it's like, <laughs> how do I? So my parents said no. <laughs> So I went to Sango Academy in, in Homer Bay, yeah. where I did my class 8. You know Homer Bay is actually my shaggy. Yeah, yeah, I know that. So, <laughs> Sango Academy, I did my class 8, yeah. and then I went to Maseno School. Uh -huh. Maseno School, Moi, yeah. Moi, Nairobi. Interesting. Yeah. You, why did you train to be a lawyer? And Interestingly, I was, I was um, admitted for education mm -hmm. at Nairobi University. Mm -hmm. I just got above average grade. Just mm -hmm. a little more happy to me. Maybe I'm, I'm very average. I I just, uh, yeah, <laughs> so I, I was invited for education, yes. but it wasn't my cup of tea. Yes. So I tried applying for other things, ICT and couldn't. And uh, I wanted really to do law. Mm -hmm. So I tried within the job joint admission board yeah. to get to do something apart from education, but mm -hmm. they couldn't. Mm -hmm. So I tried to change to law. Mm -hmm. They wanted um, a higher score mm -hmm. because that time it was very competitive. Yes. So I ended up applying to Moi mm -hmm. and then I did my, I went to Moi, so I mm -hmm. did my law in Moi. But it's basically, I, I learned what I wanted to do mm -hmm. in uh, when I was in high school. Mm -hmm. That's when I decided, um, what I want to do, I want to be a lawyer now. Mm -hmm. yeah, so I decided in high school. But interesting enough, you started to become a lawyer, but you never went ahead and to be admitted to the bar. What yeah. is that? Because I, I, I tried the Kenya School of Law. Mm -hmm. I have a long history. My dad fell sick in 2006. Uh -huh. When I was, I think I'm, I was going to third year, mm -hmm. uh, because I cleared 2007, yeah, mm -hmm. 2006. Mm -hmm. So when he became sick, my mm -hmm. mom was strange. She was mm -hmm. just a principal of a mm -hmm. high school. I had three siblings in the UK. Yeah. My mom is here alone with us. Then there's, there's a step below mm -hmm. me, another boy. Mm -hmm. Then there are twins. Mm -hmm. So he was, she was training, mm -hmm. training to take care of my dad's medical needs, mm -hmm. her own needs and other siblings, plus the ones in the UK. Mm -hmm. So uh, I came to Nairobi after, just after school, not after graduating. Mm -hmm. So when I, I landed here, I needed to find something to do. Yeah. Yes. And I went to Kenya School of Law, mm -hmm. and studied classes, yeah. and then I was looking for somewhere to do my pupillage. Mm -hmm. I couldn't find. Mm -hmm. Yes. Uh, so, so that's that the reason. reason why. And I couldn't go back and ask my mom for money mm -hmm. to pay for Kenya School of Law. Mm -hmm. That time it was cheap. It was about 100,000. Now yeah. it goes to close to yeah, half a million. Yeah. yeah, but that time it was very cheap. Yeah. But because of that, I couldn't go to Kenya School of Law. Not because my mom wouldn't have paid for me, but in my own mm -hmm. thinking, she was already straining too much. After college, there was no way I was uh, going to ask her for yeah. money. And I'm glad from that day I've never asked her for a cent. Interesting. One of the interesting uh, entrepreneurial activities that you started off and I was just trying to research on you was that you were at one point a taxi driver. Yes. Now, when I was looking for something to do, yeah. that's how I ended up. Now, before taxi driver, there's a story. Mm -hmm. I Take attempted to do yeah. forex trading. Mm -hmm. So I did, uh, it's a funny story, uh -huh. now that you know business. Yes. It's a funny story. So one time I'm walking in town mm -hmm. and there was a forex bureau, yes. blew something forex on, on Kimathi Street. Yes. And then there's one, Hapo Karibuna Capital FM. Mm -hmm. There was one just adjacent. Yeah, then yeah. at Stanley there was another one. Mm -hmm. Then opposite Kimathi House there was another one. Yeah, it's still so, there. So yeah. you know you walk and then you see the variation. You see uh, shilling, buying and selling. Yes. This is something people, you wouldn't think about it. Yeah. So you see buying at 90 shillings, mm -hmm. selling at 94. Yes. So in my mind, after working several bureau, uh, forex bureaus, I would see the variation. There's a place is 93, mm -hmm. there's a place is 95, um, there's a place, it could be lower, but I'm just yeah. giving you as an example. So in my mind, mm -hmm. if buying is 90 yeah. and selling is 94, mm -hmm. I can buy at 90 and sell at 94. Uh... You see the thinking? <laughs> it was a stupid thing. Oh my it was goodness, a stupid yeah. thing. Uh -huh. Because buying means I'm buying from you. Yes. So I have dollars. Yes. So you want to take my dollars at 90. Yes. But when I come for yours, you. you're selling at 94. Yes. So I didn't think of that. So at one point, I have 270,000. This yes. business I used to do uh -huh. in Moy. Yeah. And uh, I lose money. Mm -hmm. I lose money. So when I lost money... So you use the whole amount? Yes, to buy. But you know you're going to lose. 
<laughs> oh my goodness. You're not even Googled. My friend, I was from the village. Silas so you've Mandy. mentioned that you'd gotten 270,000 yes. and you're literally grown up. What were you doing in... Uh, in Dorit. Yes. So my siblings used to be in the UK mm -hmm. during that time when I was in campus. They were mm -hmm. also in campus. Yes. So that was the advent of laptops. Mm -hmm. You remember DevTech? He was the yeah. biggest trader of lab hardware mm -hmm. in Nairobi. Yes. So Eldorit at Moi, mm -hmm. it had not taken root. Mm -hmm. So my siblings were in mm -hmm. the UK, mm -hmm. advent of flash disks, yeah. earphones, mm -hmm. wireless, Kiango, yes. you know, all those yeah, things. Yeah. So uh, they used to send them over, mm -hmm. and because they, I was in Eldoret and it had not taken root, mm -hmm. one laptop I would sell for 240,000 mm -hmm. shillings. Mm -hmm. A laptop that they bought for 80. So oh, I 240? Yes. Guys in Eldoret ah, my friend, those runners had money. They oh, just the runners? Yes, yeah, yeah, students. No, 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 students. Ah, I was ah, students. Yes, yeah, yeah. yeah, then I had a video shop, uh -huh. more University, the guys we used to stay with, Kahoya can tell you, uh -huh. had a whole video shop, like movies. Oh, you had set it up? Yeah, I would come to Nairobi Tech from my uncle, then uh -huh. uh, photocopy them, you know, to ban them. Uh -huh. Then I go. So I made some really good money. Mm -hmm. And then I went and rented a house mm -hmm. in Eldoret, mm -hmm. a four bedroom house mm -hmm. that cost me around 5,500. Wow. My four pocket. bedroom, 55, I thought yeah, 5,000. No, no, at that time, 55. Four yes, Uko Kahoya. There's a place called uh -huh. Kahoya. Uh -huh. So I only needed one room. Mm -hmm. So I took my room and subleased the three others mm -hmm. to my friends. So, used to charge so them they used to pay. I used to charge them, I think, 2,000, everyone. So I used to make more money living uh, in that house. So I, I made quite some money. By the time I was coming to Nairobi, yeah. I had money from yeah. sales of these software, yeah. I mean, hardwares and all that. Uh, and then I used to have a video shop also in Eldoret. Then I used to be a landlord. Mm -hmm. Yes. My goodness. So mm -hmm. as a landlord, you're living in your house and you're making a living out of your yes, house. Yes, literally. Literally, <laughs> yes. Yeah. Interesting. So um, you've come to Nairobi, you've accumulated quite a lamp sum while in Those the university. Money. It, just it is a lamp sum, 270,000 yeah. from whatever, from university. Yeah. Who has that? See, everybody, on a on a tarmac. So mm -hmm. meaning no one comes to the university or with anything. But you come here and then you try Forex. I you, fail. You fail at it. Mm -hmm. And then how did you get into the taxi? So, um... One uncle of mine called Ben, mm -hmm. who had lost his job at the KICC, mm -hmm. he used to be an accountant of some shop, Uko Nyumaya KICC, mm -hmm. it had a chemist, mm -hmm. it had m it mm -hmm. had all these things. Mm -hmm. So he used to work there. Mm -hmm. So he just lost his job and started a taxi business mm -hmm. in Umoja, mm -hmm. Umoja, a place called Jessica. Mm -hmm. He was the only one. Mm -hmm. So when I came and I was living in Umoja, mm -hmm. I started, I wanted to find something to do. So during the day and quarter of the night, he would do the job. Mm -hmm. And then um, at night, I would take his car mm -hmm. to do the job. Mm -hmm. So that's why I started with Taxi Numoja. And, and I drove the taxi for quite some time until mm -hmm. I go to the media. Interesting. Mm -hmm. um, so how exactly was it? Because you, you literally, like your life was on a high and then here you are now doing the, the taxi rounds. How was how, how that? Let me, let me tell you, mm -hmm. there's no one who's going to feed you. Mm -hmm. And the money you get honorably, whether it's 500 shillings, mm -hmm. is better than money you're going to ask from mm -hmm. someone. Right? Mm -hmm. So I would rather, I did there a number of days I slept in the parking mm -hmm. because my house was closed to Musa mm -hmm. Flats in Omoja. Mm -hmm. A number of days I was auctioned, I had to go buy my things here in Gara. Mm -hmm. It's a number of times. But it was more honorable to make some little money than to ask for money. True. And if anything, there was no one I was going to ask yeah. for money. Yeah. So I preferred Chibu to Chibu. find my own Chibu. money. Yeah. Yes. All right. So. I, I was just trying also just to check out the story in terms of how you got into into media. Into media. Yes, and I got to realize the post-election violence that was actually happening in 2007 was actually pivotal, a pivotal to, part to of my it. getting just to the media. Just me through that particular story. So, what exactly did you have an interest? How is it going? Absolutely. The only time Professor Mwibeya VC then, mm -hmm. when he was uh, he came in, I remember the Eldorate team came to cover when he was being installed in Moy University. Mm -hmm. That's the only time I ever appeared in the media. Mm -hmm. So I'm standing behind him mm -hmm. and there's a mic and the mic was NTV and KTN only. Yeah. I have that picture. Mm -hmm. um, so I was in the media by the virtual standing behind mm -hmm. someone. Mm -hmm. So in 2000, when my siblings were in the UK, mm -hmm. There's a post-election violence, so mm. they used to come home. They yeah. really loved home. Mm. So one time, uh, there's post-election violence, and uh, my brother used to live in Jamori. Mm -hmm. That's my big brother. Mm. So I used to live in Umoja. Mm. So Manyanja Road. Mm. Musa Flats is right on Manyanja Road. Manyanja Road, Wapi? Manyanja Road, Umoja. Yeah, I know Manyanja Road. Yeah, yeah. so uh, when you're heading towards uh, Komarok, yeah, yeah. there's uh, just Sukshanza Kupanda Manyanja Road. It's not so far off. Ah. Uh, then you get this Barabara ya Kwenda um, Umoja. Mm. So just uh, up Ujuki yeah, yeah. Dogo. Uh -huh. So there's Musa Flats. So that road was 
um, that time it was Matope. Mm. And then everyone who was rioting was from that end. Mm -hmm. So they would pass by your window and knock your window. Mm. And then we had to put grills and all. Yeah. So during the post election violence, I went to Jamhuri. It mm -hmm. was safer. Yeah. But next to Kibra. Kibra yeah. I went there to live with my bro. Yeah. So they had come quarters. Mm -hmm. So one time, because I'm, I'm, I'm from Baba's side, mm -hmm. it was easy to walk there and see what they had done. Mm -hmm. So Sheila Kwamboka, you know Sheila Kwamboka? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Sheila Kwamboka and Jen Goiri yeah. had just been enlisted at uh, K24. Yeah. Eric Latif was our boss, then mm -hmm. John Mwenda, oh, Bernardo Tieno, uh, those were our bosses. What? Yeah, so mm -hmm. they had just been enlisted, so they were sent, two mm -hmm. girls, mm -hmm. to cover. Mm -hmm. Uh, riots in Kibera. Sheila Kombox, Kombox. Sheila Kombox. With camera, yeah, yeah. and Jen Goiri. Yeah, yeah. Then Jen Goiri is sort of Kikuyu, although yeah. she's not strictly Kikuyu. Yeah. And uh, Sheila Kwamboka is kissing. Yeah, yeah. And they're ladies, yeah. and they're young, beautiful yeah. girls. They go to Kibra. They were harassed. Mm. And their camera and equipment taken away by mm. those guys in Kibra. Yeah. But remember, I was in Jamori, so late in the evening, I took the camcorder, mm. went inside, took the photos. Mm. I don't know how Bernard and Eric Latif knew that I had the footage. Mm -hmm. So I received a call and uh, they say, we hear you have this footage from inside Kibra. Mm. Can you bring it to K24? Mm. They say, absolutely, I have it. So mm. I take it and they look at it and then they like it. Then uh, I think it was Bernard who told me Utalipwa, mm. 2,500. Mm. And I'm like, so I can make money, mm. you know? Then uh, instead of going to find more footage, I told them I want to work there. Mm. So that's what happened. And uh, I told them I want to work and gracefully Eric, after we argued a lot, mm -hmm. and told me there's no way a lawyer can be in the newsroom. Yeah. I told them I just want to learn. Mm -hmm. The good thing I was first learner. Mm -hmm. So they allowed me, they told me when I'm home, if you can join me, come back. Mm -hmm. When people are gone, you can use the machines and practice. Mm -hmm. I sat at the, at the um, lobby mm -hmm. waiting for, I see a free computer will go. So they allowed me to interact with people. Mm -hmm. And within no time, I'd known how to edit Final mm -hmm. Cut. Mm -hmm. And then uh, there was a lady called Lucy. Obama is coming into office. There's a lot of international stories. Mm -hmm. Jeff Koinange, I don't know how he fixed me to be on the international desk. Mm -hmm. And then that's how I started sitting in the media. Interesting. So it was interest that actually got you to that particular it's point. It's just that then, knowledge that yeah. I could earn money. Yeah. Yeah, I didn't think about it. Interesting. So mm -hmm. when you got to, to media, um, how exactly, what exactly, you came in as an editor or what did you come in as? I came in as someone who was going to learn. Uh -huh. Yes, I just wanted to learn, mm -hmm. to know what's happening there. I was paid after nine months. And so what were you doing during the nine months, like a gestation coming, period? Just coming. Sometimes we were being paid, you pay Saki Dogo, your interns. Yeah. Sometimes it comes. Sometimes How did you survive doesn't. at that particular point? Remember, I had a taxi that I was driving. Ah, so, so at night I would drive the taxi, taxi, get for 1400 uh, 1200 then, give my morning, uncle Kidogo, yeah. remain in town. Interesting. Mm. So one of your earlier, what was it called, maybe I can say, structured business uh, exploits was in the car rental business. Yeah. Well, it has been the car rental business. How mm. did that idea come about? And so first I was a taxi driver, mm -hmm. but it didn't start from here. Mm -hmm. My mom used to have a B11. Do you know what a B11 is? Yes, Nissan. Yes, yeah, I'm, 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 So you know, my mom used to yeah. have a B11, yeah. and then uh, sometimes later she upgraded mm -hmm. to a better car. Mm -hmm. You know the better car? Uh -huh. 505 Peugeot. Uh, which year was that? <laughs> that was a long time. Oh ago. man, that was yeah. Kitambo. Yeah, Kitambo. So whenever yeah. I was in campus, mm -hmm. I would come home, mm -hmm. I would take the B11 now mm -hmm. because she had a better car, yeah, yeah. a Peugeot, yeah. and use it for taxi. Manual, both of them taxi me got It was such an old car. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> so yeah. that's where my taxi business started. Uh -huh. So I used to make money to go into campus because remember my dad was sick, I couldn't yeah, ask yeah. for money. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so it was already here. Mm -hmm. So in 2000, and when I started getting paid, mm -hmm. the Kenyatta family bought K24. Mm -hmm. So we had a check off system with the uh, NCBA. That time it was just CBA Bank. Mm -hmm. So I took a million shillings. Mm -hmm. Check off because I was working for K24. And how much were being paid? What's your first salary? Ah, my first salary was 60,000. 60,000? Yeah. Right. Everyone at K24, except the people who came later, mm. were paid 64. Yeah, so all of us, <laughs> all of us were <laughs> earning 60,000, <laughs> except the bosses. Uh, 60,000. Interesting. Yeah. So from your 60,000, I made it 48 in guitar, statutory yeah. deductions. And then now you took a loan of a million shillings. A million shillings. What did you take the loan for? So at that time, I had already known the taxi business mm. was working. Mm -hmm. So I had calculated I buy a one NZD. You know what an NZD mm, is? Yeah, sure. At that time, it was around yeah, like 50,000. Yeah, yeah. So I calculated one NZD, insurance, I am good. Mm -hmm. I didn't remember this facilitation processing fee. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So it brought it to around 970,000. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So when I looked at the money, I said, uh, taxi, if I have an old 
um, 111. You know 111? Toyota yeah, 111? Yeah, 111. 111, yes. 111 the yeah. So 111, 110 will cost you a second hand 350. Yeah. So I took 1 million shillings to buy one NZD, yeah. but with hindsight, I said, no, no, no. Yeah. So I took two, 700 mm -hmm. cash, mm -hmm. and deposited for a third one, 100,000 from DevTech. DevTech had ventured mm -hmm. now into car business. I was a yard in my neno. Mm. Apo, Neno, oh, Neno, evangelist, Apo, yeah, Apo to Uhuru Highway. Yeah, 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 yeah. So I took three cars from him and took them for taxi. I realized they would make me the same money. So okay. one car would give me 45. Oh, yeah. So you got, from the million, you got three cars. Three cars, so no, two instead cars, of one. So two cars you got in cash. Yes. Another one you're taking a loan uh, for it. Yeah, I know. I took, I took, uh, I was paying for the pony. So I took 100. Remember, I bought two from him. Yes. And oh, one extra one. For one. So you had three gave cars. Me one. Yes, all so of I was them, paying Toyota, for the pony. 111. 111, all of them. And then so you put them in a taxi business. A taxi business. So how much are they giving you? That's uh, 45 per car. Uh -huh. On a good man. Forty five thousand dollars. Yes, forty five, yes. Interesting. So, so it took you how long to pay off the loan? Um I don't even remember when how long mm -hmm. it took me to repay the loan. Mm -hmm. But I repaid the loan, that is what I'm sure of. Mm -hmm. I repaid the loan uh, after some time. Mm -hmm. But then I realized these old cars were breaking yeah, up yeah, so breaking often. Down, yeah. So that's two thousand and ten. Mm -hmm. 2011 CCTV mm -hmm. comes calling, mm -hmm. so I sell I sell all those cars, mm -hmm. and I go to CCTV. Now there's much money. Mm -hmm. Now from being paid, Roski Motor had given me. Now I was earning around one fifteen thousand oh, after four years, yeah, yeah. Uh, because KTN was trying to poach yeah. me, uh -huh. uh, Kizito Namulanda and uh, uh, Katwan Zile. Yeah. They tried to poach me twice. Uh -huh. I refused. So each time Rose would add me money and uh, I was a very good worker. Yeah. So she added me 75. Yeah. Then I went and thanked That's her. That's the CCTV. No, 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 no. Yeah. Oh, four. I four, yes. So I am the only one after yeah. we were added money at the end of the year. Yeah. I went back to Rose's office yeah. and said, I know I don't deserve it, yeah. but thank you very much for this money. Interesting. And she was very happy. So the next time, instead of adding me 5K, she added me 30. Wow. So when I was yeah. being poor, she added yeah. me 75, then yeah. another 115. Interesting. Yeah. Interesting. Mm -hmm. On that particular month, I'm being told you need to go on a small break because uh, at least you've added, at least by the time I get to Great Wafika, 15,000. So after the break to Tendele, I'll see how exactly the millions have added up up to date. So see you after the break. So before we went on the break, Ken was taking us through his journey in terms of some of the business exploits he had while in the university, how he got his particular breakthrough in the media, and how exactly he transitioned from 60,000 to 115,000. So at the 115,000, primarily, you had negotiated your way while at K24 and got into this, and then CCTV came to... Yeah, to actually, I, everyone, um, every year, Roski Bodo used to add us some money on top. Mm -hmm. It ranged between 5,000 and 15,000, mm -hmm. depending on what she your thought performance, it was her yeah, business. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I was very disciplined and mm -hmm. I was a hard worker. Mm -hmm. If you ask anyone I've ever worked with, mm -hmm. I put 150% mm -hmm. in my work. I work. I joke around mm -hmm. when it comes to work, work I have work, to yeah. give my best mm -hmm. because at the end of the year, that's what counts. Mm -hmm. When I was in campus, I haven't told you. Yeah. I used to tell myself, Yanni, I just live that someone is able to pay me 30,000 shillings. Mm -hmm. I'll be so good. That is. Yeah. 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 Even that yeah. 60 did not work. Yeah. <laughs> uh -huh. So, anyway. Um, I get to 115, then Richard Kagoy one time calls me yeah. at the cafeteria yeah. and tells me, yeah. uh, Ken, come, mm. uh, there's this new TV station, International mm. Coast CCTV Africa. Mm. They, I'm looking for people, mm. can you apply? Mm. I say, why not? Mm. So we applied. The funny thing which I did get, I got it. Oh, <laughs> so the person who invited you never... <clears throat> no, he never got the job. Never got into the never door. Never got yeah. the job. So me, I got the job. Yeah. I was their pioneer reporter out of, the, out of Kenya. Mm -hmm. uh, after we came from China, I went to Kinshasa. Mm -hmm. Stayed there for two weeks, mm -hmm. uh, 2011, December. Mm -hmm. And then I came back. Now CCTV mm -hmm. gave me mm -hmm. good money. Mm -hmm. CCTV from one fifteen thousand mm -hmm. gave me 350. Hey! It was good money and they were treated as, treating us a little nicely mm. until the gold used to Kenya and started mm. bullying Kenyans. Yeah. So we went out in mass. Mm. We left mm. almost half of the original staff. Mm -hmm. We left. The funny thing, the guys who remained are still there. Beatrice uh, Marshall, yeah. Nina Karibe and the rest. Yeah. So CCTV, there was a lot of money, yeah. money that I was not even making in the taxi business. Yeah. So I sold everything uh, and started afresh. So I would travel, make money on Pariyama and everything. Mm -hmm and I would still make good salary, mm -hmm. so I didn't need it. Mm -hmm. So when I sold everything, mm -hmm. I bought <laughs> my first big car. Which is your first big car? Ah, that was, um, now that you know cars, you know mm -hmm. a 210? 210? Yeah. No, Toyota? No, 210 is a Mercedes. Oh, the, oh 210? Yes. Oh, it was before, oh yeah, so <coughs> yeah. I get you. Yeah. 210 to 11, yeah. 220 to 21. Yeah. 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 So I bought a 210, mm -hmm. 
and uh, because I was traveling, I was comfortable. Mm -hmm. I didn't need so extra it's money. So it's Mercedes. Yes. I didn't need extra money. <laughs> you go to so, where you belong. <laughs> German. So, <laughs> I was not the motiva motivation was yeah. I was driving old cars. Man. Yes. I was uh, driving, so I, I got the past opportunity to buy mm -hmm. a good car. Yes. When I sold everything. Mm -hmm. But now um, you asked the connection with the car hire yes. business. So at that time, I had some money. And that, was, that was also the period my dad was sick, mm -hmm. uh, very sick, and he died that year. Mm -hmm. And I'm glad I, I had something substantial to mm -hmm. uh, help him with at that time because it was good money. Mm -hmm. um, so when we stopped working for CCTV, mm -hmm. I had some money. Mm -hmm. So obviously local media, mm -hmm. when I left CCTV and went back to Nation, mm -hmm. So when you the, left, how much of a lump sum did you have? Uh, nothing really because I resigned mm -hmm. and the HR structure was not proper. Mm -hmm. So there was nothing, there's mm -hmm. no, nothing we were given, <laughs> just leave but with mm -hmm. your last salary. Mm -hmm. um, so I went to Nation mm -hmm. and Nation couldn't pay that money. Mm -hmm. So we took pay cuts. Mm -hmm. Myself, Mark Masai mm -hmm. and the rest mm -hmm. who left. Mm -hmm. So from that money, 350, mm -hmm. I went back to Nation, mm -hmm. just over 200. So mm -hmm. you have to start building up again. Mm -hmm. And it was understandable. Yeah. But then you have this lifestyle you're used to. Mm -hmm. So you have to cut for the difference. Mm -hmm. So what do you do? Mm -hmm. I said, I go back to what I know, mm -hmm. which is business. Mm -hmm. So I decided to import cars mm -hmm. on and then put in a showroom. Mm -hmm. It was a showroom that was behind I&M. Mm -hmm. um, that showroom, yeah. I would buy cars mm -hmm. and sell. Now that was also the advent of Axi, you know, Toyota Axi. Mm, yeah, yeah, so, yeah. <clears throat> at that time, we buy them for about 1.1, mm -hmm. 900 to 1.1. Mm -hmm. I'll put like three, four in the showroom. Mm -hmm. But these cars will take four months to sell. Mm -hmm. So by the time you're selling one, number plate is you shy. May you may change. Yeah. So no one is buying the old number plate. Yes. So at one point, someone just asked, Ken, there's a friend of mine who's coming from the UK. He needs a car to hire. Mm. A switch car. Yes. Just need a, sm a small car. Yeah. I thought of my cars in the showroom. Mm. I said, why can't I get one? How many cars did you have then? At that time, I had four in the showroom. Ah, yes. so you had a substantial, yes, you had made a substantial like, investment. Like 4.6 million. Yes, just lying there. Yeah, just at the showroom. Mm -hmm. So I tell him, I, I can get your car. Mm -hmm. So I go to the showroom and get one car out. Mm -hmm. So I get the car and give him. So mm -hmm. per weekend, this guy was paying me 3,500. Mm. Per day. Per day. And then he took it for two weeks. Yeah. That was good money. Times 14. Yes, that was good money. Mm. So I started thinking, I can make money while I try to sell. Mm. So I got the other ones out. Mm. Tried to put them on car. Yeah. Then I realized, hey, it's not working. Because mm. guys will be reckless and they're small cars. Uh... They come back without bumpers. Oh, I'm yeah. going to get a car. Yes. So <laughs> I realized the small cars are not working yeah. for me. So remember they are four? Yeah. So I sold everything. Mm -hmm. And I sold that to loss. Yeah. I had now about 3.5 million. Yeah. I asked so myself, from 4.6 I lost. That's yeah, a significant I, I loss. Over a million, yeah. I lost. So uh, that's now 2,000. That's why you're still at NTV. Now I'm at NTV. Yes. So I said, this 3.5, mm -hmm. I can't venture back to these small cars mm -hmm. and I can't eat the money. Mm -hmm. So I asked myself, how much does a Prado give mm -hmm. you in a month? Mm -hmm. So I calculated a Prado will give you a minimum of 8,000. Mm -hmm. If it's rented per day, if it's rented for a month, that's 240,000. Mm -hmm. It's a good idea, mm. but I couldn't afford a Prado in cash. Mm -hmm. So I went to um, a Toyotsu. Mm. I went to Toyotsu mm -hmm. and spoke to the lady there. He told me to get bank financing. Mm. I put in a deposit mm. and a deposit of about 1.5. Mm. Um, then I got the first Prado out. Mm -hmm. So now Prado, remember you had four cars. Yes, now you have one. Now you had four cars, four drivers, um, four services. Mm four headaches because mm. this is headache yeah, yeah. now it, it translated to only one yeah now you have only one doesn't give you a headache because it's a four by four yeah it's not your money it's bank money mm. and uh no one is reckless with mm. these cars so that's a trj 120 mm -hmm. um and that's why i started mm -hmm. So I have this one car that gives me good money. So Luckily, the Prado, I got. So the Prado was specifically for the business, or yeah, used for the to, business. So I used to use it, and then in the business. No, I never used it even ah, once. I never. Ah. The only time I use my Prados is when I buy it, mm -hmm. I drive home, ask my mom to lay her hands on mm -hmm. the car. Abarik, akibariki na I know mm -hmm. it's safe on the road. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so that's the only time I drive them. I never drive them mm -hmm. unless I have to test them. Mm -hmm. So I have one car giving me good money. Luckily, I got a client, I still remember his name, mm -hmm. John Sambu Kibet. Mm -hmm. He took the new car for six months straight. Was he an athlete? Six months. No, no, he's just a businessman. Six months straight. Renting? Yes. 8,000 so 8, per day. Per day. So, so 30 times say, eight, that's almost 240,000 240, yes. So he per took month. it straight for, for, for six months. So 
I had money I could pay my loans. Yeah. Now in the third month, yeah. uh, two of my friends, one is in the media, yeah. one is a sister to someone in the media, yeah. wanted to buy cars. So yeah. they give me their money to import yeah. for them cars. Yeah. And then, because remember I used to import, yeah. so I used their money to deposit for a second private. Mm -hmm. And now I go to Carmax. I meet a guy called Tony. Uh, and Tony gives me a car uh -huh. from Carmax and bank loan again. That's my second car. Prado still. Prado still. Mm -hmm. So I start, I have now have two Prados. Mm -hmm. After one year, I go for the third one. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's now. There was a, like a cycle. Mm -hmm. and now you understand, yeah. Because primarily oh, you can look at it in terms of maybe you make 2,000 to 40,000 per, what's it called? One per car. month, yeah. assuming per mm -hmm. year, probably one point something. It's not enough later to finance it, but was it sustainable? What did you see in the business that no, you made the year, business? Per year you make a minimum of uh, close to three million. Shares. Yes. Mm -hmm. um, so how did you... How did you manage that particular transition? Because it comes easy. I got this and then I built this. I got because this. because I was determined. Mm -hmm. I would say, for example, I would put a target and say I want a business that would give me two million shillings a month. Mm. Uh, how much am I generating right now? Mm. I say I'm generating seven hundred and fifty thousand a mm. month. So if one business generates seven hundred and fifty, mm. I start thinking of doing the same business. Mm. So now I have. 1.5 million. Mm -hmm. Then if I have four of that similar business, I have how much money? Mm -hmm. It's four, mm -hmm. three million. Mm -hmm. Yes, yeah, so that's what I do. So I just calculated if one gives me this and I'm able to get and my bank records are really good mm -hmm. at that time. Yeah. So I move and get a second one financing mm -hmm. also. Mm -hmm. Then I get a third one. Mm -hmm. Even the current car I drive right now, yeah. I never put a shilling in it. It is bought by the it business. It is bought by this business. I never put a shilling in it. That's interesting. Yeah. Um, so that time you were juggling the business and you're still working for NTV? Yes. And then the acts came for you at NTV? Yeah, 2020. Yes. Yes. Uh, how was it for you? Uh, that particular, how did you get the news? Because um, I know... Uh, cause it was devastating and probably this is the first time I'll talk about it. Yes. Um, because when there was a hemorrhage at NTV mm -hmm. after 2017 mm -hmm. election, Everyone left. Those are vacancies. There's a gap that I saw mm -hmm. um, because we were almost the same level mm -hmm. now with the reporters, mm -hmm. and now they have left. So mm -hmm. I saw that vacancy. Mm -hmm. And when I got job, job offers, because I got offers mm -hmm. when everyone was leaving, mm -hmm. I declined because mm -hmm. there was a space. Yeah. So for two years, two years, we worked our whatever off yes. for Nation. Mm -hmm. When I was at Nation, I was the top. Mm -hmm. I went on top of everyone yeah, else yeah. and I was doing the best. Mm -hmm. The show was the best rated mm -hmm. and all. So when it came, it was a surprise. Mm -hmm. uh, because how do you get your best out? Mm -hmm. Just like right now, Masai and Okari. Yeah. How do you get your best out? Yeah. But I realized it was a bad business decision, mm -hmm. but a good managerial decision, mm -hmm. management decision. Mm -hmm. And always you have to strike the balance. Why do you say that? So it was a good business decision, a bad business decision because I was the top, mm -hmm. but good for management mm. Why? because we were having two new people mm. and once you stay so much in the mini house mm. you get to know you are in oh. words you can get away with anything mm. you want and because you're the best mm. no one cares mm. who are you why mm. are you telling me yeah. so they had to get me out yeah. technically yeah. because for them to settle yeah. you don't work with an airhead yes. sort of a hard head yes yeah so that's what happened mm. so it was devastating so i decided at that time i'm done with the media anyway and let me start my business and by the time you're not starting because primarily you're still doing business. But mm -hmm. when you, you mentioned that when you had gone to NTV, mm -hmm. that given you a lower offer than it was in yes, CCTV. Yes. Had you grown as you were growing in uh, Media Max at the time, or it was just what you came in with, you're just supplementing it with what you're used to through your business? Um, had I grown what? Had you grown through NTV in terms of financially? No. Um, the thing is, it reaches a point that money is not an issue, money that I'm paid by someone. Mm -hmm. And you do this business talks a lot. Mm -hmm. You realize that money that you're paid by someone mm -hmm. will never be enough. Mm -hmm. Even if Standard was to give me 10 million shillings, mm -hmm. I would still think I deserve 15. Mm -hmm. Even when they give me, I still think I deserve more. Yeah. But I, I, I got to a point that I realized that money that I'm given, I have one, I'm not entitled. Mm -hmm. It's a favor. Yeah, yeah. It's not your right. Mm -hmm. Many people can do what you're doing and be in your position and do better than you. Mm -hmm. So I've never felt entitled, mm -hmm. especially for money that I'm give, being given by someone. Mm -hmm. But I always feel entitled for the money I created that I make. Mm -hmm. So what I do, I strive to look for my money mm -hmm. as I complement with this other Mm -hmm. So when they proposed reduction, mm -hmm. honestly at that time, mm -hmm. even the bosses mm -hmm. were earning less than the money we were being given. Mm -hmm. Imagine you're a senior reporter earning more than your boss, ah. the person you're working under. Yeah. So when they re-evaluated our payment yeah. and told us, well, mm -hmm. we'll give you a job but mm -hmm. we can't pay you this because mm -hmm. even your boss is done. Yeah, and it was true. Yeah. 
we accepted it. And then mm -hmm. I told myself, mm -hmm. I know how to make money in this mm -hmm. town. I'll make mm -hmm. my own money. Mm -hmm. Yes. Interesting. And then after that particular layover, one of the interesting things is that you did, uh, what's it called? You you posted out that you started out the Kenmi Jungo Consultancy. Yeah. Just take me through that. Was it, it was, influenced by... No, no, no. Yeah. This or was something just... that existed mm -hmm. from Kitambo. Mm -hmm. The thing, it was not so pronounced. Mm -hmm. I only came out clear mm -hmm. because now I knew I was my own man mm -hmm. and I could advertise because mm -hmm. some employers don't like you mm -hmm. when you're making money. Mm -hmm. So I said, now that I'm, I don't think of me going back to the mm -hmm. media again, mm -hmm. let me make this work for me. Mm -hmm. So that's the time I had to come and I capitalized mm -hmm. on the situation. Mm -hmm. And now that's another business trick, mm -hmm. capitalize on it. Mm -hmm. Because I was trending, Kenyans were wondering yeah, how yeah. do you fire the best? Yes. So I capitalized on that and came out and told people, yeah, Mijungo Consultancy mm -hmm. Limited is out and it's legal consultancy. Mm -hmm. And it gave me problems. I was even taken to the police station. Why? I was arrested. What, why did they take you? Um, Nelson Harvey and the whole team at that time thought that I was practicing law without a certificate. Mm -hmm. So they wanted to cut me short. So when they investigated, they found that this is a legal thing. I'm a trained lawyer. Mm. I can do consultants. Yes. You can do legal consultants. Do, do you know that? Yeah. Yeah. yeah our, our our chiefs at home, our mothers. Mm. When you steal someone's chicken, yes. when someone goes to comes to you and says, uh, Ian, mm -hmm. uh, um, meiba kuku. No, what so do I do? You tell them now. Go mm. to the police station. True. Go and report. Mm. Then you're doing legal consultancy, mm. so you don't need to go to school to do such mm. consultancy. Mm -hmm. So I felt uh, um, slighted, mm -hmm. but then I, I, uh, few of my good friends helped with it mm, and rationalized it and boom interesting i have it today so there's something very interesting that you've taken us through the journey so you had started prados you've you bought quite a number of prados mm. scaled up and then one day boom you're posting up that you're doing helicopters now and you're yeah. doing plane hires mm. how did that come how did you that particular transition did the business grow to a point where by now it has gotten to a point where it's too big now you want to look for something else or how did you get to that? Or staying ahead is always important. Mm -hmm. Even right now we're thinking of how to stay ahead. Mm -hmm. Just the same way I started from small cars mm -hmm. and I realized before a lot of people that uh, 4x4s would make me good, good money. Mm -hmm. So just staying on car hire, mm -hmm. I had known the business, I had clients. Mm -hmm. So you think what next? But this idea came up one day when some lady from the US randomly gave mm. me a call mm. when I was trending mm -hmm. and asked me, mm. now I was trending for another wrong reason. Mm -hmm. And you know when someone is trending, you yeah. Google, you find everything yeah, else yeah, yeah. they do. So she asked me, I'm coming to Kenya mm. and I'd like um, to know if your company can also help me get a chopper. Mm -hmm. Then I said, why not? Mm -hmm. I had never done it. Mm -hmm. So that's how the idea started. Mm -hmm. Then I realized, oh, so I can do this. So did you have enough money to buy a chopper or did you lease it? No, 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 no. there's not it? enough money. One of the choppers I use mm -hmm. is actually you from use. the same person. Yeah. After we had negotiated, she told me, by the way, you know, yeah. I have my own choppers yeah. and this is not the kind of money that we get. Mm -hmm. So that's how it ended up in my company. Mm -hmm. Because she thought, how come I don't get this money the other side? Mm -hmm. You know, so that's how it ended. So one of them is, I, I don't have money, 400 million to buy a chopper. Mm -hmm. But yes, there's one in the company. Interesting. And the rest, we list them for whenever on need. So there's one owned by the company? Yes. How did you get to that particular level? Did you get investors? Or? No, 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 it's just from this lady who trusted me. Oh, so she gave you enough business to buy a chopper? No, no, she didn't give me enough business. So once I list out and she realized how much money you can make from the chopper mm -hmm. business, yes. she told me they have choppers in the family. Ah. And she want one to come to our company yes. to work with us permanently. That's how we got it. Interesting. So like you bringing your Prado now or VA to our company yeah. for us to make for you money. Interesting. Yes. So with that, that's a very interesting journey that we've come. So one Prado, but one, two, three. Mm -hmm. So where are you at, at this particular point whereby you already have a chopper within the company? So mm -hmm. how many Prados are there? How big have you gone to? Um, we thank God. Mm -hmm. <laughs> we thank <laughs> God. <laughs> the God. We thank God. No, we thank God where yeah. we are. Yeah. Because we have a branch in Mombasa. Mm -hmm. We have a branch in Kisumu. Mm -hmm. Yes. And the main one in Nairobi. Mm -hmm. Yes. Interesting. And through your journey, because primarily you're still in media up to date, you're still running the business up to date, how have you managed to juggle between both? You have to make a commitment and a decision mm -hmm. that you have to make it or make it. Mm -hmm. If you don't have that commitment mm -hmm. and uh, personalize these things and make mm -hmm. them close to you, mm -hmm. you will not succeed. You have to work extra. Mm -hmm. I sometimes have to go to the airport at 3 a.m. Mm -hmm. when I have all my drivers really. Mm -hmm. they have to, I have to go to the airport mm -hmm. at 3 a.m. to pick a client. Mm -hmm. I have to wake up at 6 when we have four drivers and we need 11 cars mm -hmm. and we have to bring more cars, mm -hmm. I have to be at the airport myself. Mm -hmm. I have weddings and ceremonies where the groom or the bride says, hey, can we do your tani and yeah. I do it myself. So that commitment is the only way mm -hmm. you're going to make it. Mm -hmm. So you have to juggle where you work. Mm -hmm. I work officially for Standard. Mm -hmm. uh, apart from Standard, I have to mind my own business. Mm -hmm. So as I mind 
standards business. Mm -hmm. I mind my own business. Mm -hmm. So something interesting, you've mentioned that you're minding your own business and also minding the company's mission. So between the two of them, because mm -hmm. you're, you're literally actively experiencing entrepreneurship and employment, mm -hmm. how would you say, or maybe how would you rank both? Because you know we're in a world whereby entrepreneurship is the thing, everybody needs to be entrepreneur, uh, what's it called, to become an entrepreneur. But you have said like, I'm balancing both. You will never know how to run your own if someone doesn't teach you. Mm -hmm. You have to work with someone mm -hmm. you know, for them to teach you how to do your own. Mm -hmm. If I'm not efficient, for example, the standard where I work right mm -hmm. now, if I don't do timelines, mm -hmm. I don't pay attention, I will never pay attention at my place. Mm -hmm. If you leave the space you are with in bad shape, you'll never clear yours at home. Mm -hmm. If you don't spread your own bed at home, mm -hmm. Right? If I don't spread, let me say, if I don't arrange my locker mm -hmm. at standard, mm -hmm. I will never arrange my mm -hmm. locker at home mm -hmm. because no one is watching at mm -hmm. home. Mm -hmm. So it has to start, diligence has to start where you are. Mm -hmm. So you learn. Mm -hmm. Primarily, you're there to learn mm -hmm. and know people's skills and how to work with mm -hmm. people so that you apply it mm -hmm. there. We have about 11 employees. Mm -hmm. You have to know. Mm -hmm. Yes, you have to know how to work with people. So mm -hmm. that's why it's usually good mm -hmm. to work somewhere. Mm -hmm first then you go up your own interesting so it's, it's yeah. this commitment yeah um, and why um because you're at the helm in terms of uh, what's it called you're a top anchor uh what's it called you're, you're a senior editor you're enjoying it and but also your business is actually thriving so why have you never wanted to jump jump fully back into business um i have a goal mm -hmm. and there is something that uh, employment gives you mm -hmm. and then there's something that um your business gives you. Mm -hmm. I look at it this way. Mm -hmm. I look at it like a tank. Mm -hmm. Look at a 20 liter tank mm -hmm. and uh, with uh, 10 outlets, mm -hmm. 10 taps. Mm -hmm. And then look at it at your house with mm -hmm. one inlet. Mm -hmm. So if all the taps are open at the same time, mm -hmm. because there's black taps, yeah. there is your own expenditure, yeah. there's all those things. Mm -hmm. So consider yourself as a tank. Mm -hmm. So there's one inlet mm -hmm. to that tank. Yeah. Now let this one inlet be standard group. Yeah. So it there's an inlet that brings in water, mm. but I can I have expenditure. Mm. Uh, I have bills. Mm. I have siblings. Mm. I have my mother. Mm. I have my friends. Mm. I have this spontaneous spindle. Yeah, yeah. You have to change. You have medical. So consider all those as outlets from that tank. Yeah. So if you only have one source of income, mm. you drain mm. out so quickly. Mm -hmm. But consider that you have so many sources of income. Mm -hmm. That's why I diversify. Mm -hmm. So I have employment, mm -hmm. I have executive car hire, mm -hmm. I have auto dealer, mm -hmm. I have daylight communication, mm -hmm. and then I have Kenny June consultants. Mm -hmm. Those are five. Mm -hmm. So those are all inlets and outlets. Okay. So when I have five outlets, mm -hmm. I have another five inlets. Mm -hmm. you, that tank will never run dry. Interesting. But if you have one yeah, and too. you open all the taps, it will be in less than a week. Yeah. Exactly. Interesting. So before we get to our outlet for the show, I have some inlet of questions that I'd like us to go through. Mm -hmm. So in 90 seconds, I'll ask around 10 questions. And I want you, yes, so I want you just, whatever comes to your mind, um, you pop it. So at what age do you want to retire? Uh, in five years, 45. Do you ever post inspirational quotes on social media? I used to, I stopped. Why? Uh, because they didn't make sense. Yeah, Kilam yeah. yeah. Get me experiences yeah. out of Guinea. Yeah. 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 Um, what does a person need to be happy? Uh, themselves. Mm -hmm. Starts within you. What's been your best age? Um, where I am right now. Mm -hmm. Every year is better for me. It's a good age for me. Interesting. Yeah. How many pull-ups can you do now in a row? Hey, my friend. Uh, Fifteen. Uh -huh. Yes. Interesting. How many hours of sleep do you need? Um, you need eight. Mm -hmm. Medical, I only do four maximum. Every day? A maximum four. Interesting. Yeah. Name for me a word that starts with the letter Q. Queen. All right. I thought you would say Quinta or Quinta. <laughs> <laughs> oh, can you climb a mountain or uh, would you climb a mountain or jump from a plane? Uh, plane, adrenaline junkie. Or a helicopter. Yeah. Yeah, since you have one. <laughs> How long can you hold your breath for? I have tried this, yeah. a maximum of 40 seconds. Uh -huh. yeah. And finally, who inspires you? Um, you will be amazed mm -hmm. who inspires me. Mm -hmm. Is my style. <laughs> yeah, that's a good it question. It's like the Snoop Dogg thing. Yeah, yeah I want to thank, thank first. Myself. I want to thank me <laughs> <laughs> for sleeping late and waking up early. Yeah. Interesting. I just yeah. said to end the show because I know there's a different kinds of people just watching this. What word of advice would you share to anybody who's aspirational, mostly in terms of just 
the journey towards wealth, because you are working towards wealth. You want to retire by 45. Yes. What, what, what kind of advice would you give? Because I've said it practically, mm -hmm. one, believe in yourself. Mm -hmm. I know you last, what do I believe in? Mm -hmm. I have nothing to believe in. Mm -hmm. But believe in yourself in that, know that you can do it. Mm -hmm. um, I tell myself my background mm -hmm. cannot have me here, mm -hmm. favor from God, mm -hmm. but it's because I believe they could do it. Mm -hmm. I mean, I have friends who are billionaires and this stuff, mm -hmm. and I believe they're not so distant. Mm -hmm. uh, it's just my time. Mm -hmm. um, then, in business, there's only one thing. Mm -hmm. When you believe in yourself, you believe in the superior being. Yeah. Because they give you that strength to believe in yourself. Mm. But one thing that I learned in business is not listen. Mm. I have never thought of quitting what I do because it failed. Mm -hmm. It's failed. Mm. I have lost mm. time. Mm. I have lost time. Mm -hmm. I have lost money. Mm -hmm. I have lost payments. I have been offered. Mm. But I will not stop. I have been consistent. You know what consistency gives you? Mm. Lessons. Mm. You learn what not to do the next mm. time. And then you don't, people say I failed in business. You know why? Yeah. Leo na taku uza simu, and he moza tatu na man. This one is not working. One time is on tour, and one time on uza. It's not working. Okay, let me try clothes. It's not working. Okay, what do I do now? Come on, simu na uza, please sell to the end. Because every day is a lesson. How did I sell for? Let me try to sell eight. Let me try to sell ten. Now you learn how not to sell for, but how to increase it. So yeah, that consistency in business, you have to be consistent. My goodness. Yes. Interesting. And on, on that particular note, we've been very consistent by where exactly it is that we film our episodes here at the Capital Club, whereby it's literally a place you can get all particular amenities and it's a place whereby as an entrepreneur you can get to interact and network with the who's who because every main, name any big person in this particular town i'm not going to share some of them but every person who's big in this particular town is a member of the capital club it's been a, such an interesting conversation with mr ken Mijingo. we should do this again i think there's so much i think an hour is just not enough for us to have a conversation you need a whole day yeah we need we will plan for one day shoot with ken Mijungo and just pick the whole day because <laughs> the there's so much airtime this digital Mm -hmm. so much actually to get mm -hmm. to do so thanks so much for having watched the late night business my name is ian dennis you can follow this particular conversation across all social media networks at ktn home at ian dennis network and just looking forward to always having you each and every week thank you so much until next time bye bye